Sato's getting ready to catch the falling pipe, but then it would get stuck to him. At least the two of you. Akago. What's up, Ross Squad, and welcome back to another live reaction for My Hero Academia manga chapter number 207, which is entitled Preemptive Victory. And I have a sneaking suspicion that this match, match number four in particular, is going to be a bit more explosive than the previous matches that we have had. Last match, we got plenty of fire, so I'm expecting plenty of explosions for this next match. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what's going to be the result and what's going to go down with Bakugo in Class A going up against Hokage and Class B because so far with the matchups that we have had, Class A won the first match, Class B won the second match, and then for the previous match, match number three, it ended in a draw. But before we dive into this chapter, I also wanted to bring this up because I recently had community posts unlocked on my channel and I have posted a question to you guys asking what you guys' opinions on who would win out in this fourth match. And I actually had a decent amount of you guys participate in that poll. We had about 60 votes in this question of for the fourth match in chapter 207, which team do you think will end up winning this fourth match? And out of those 60 votes, 67 of you guys voted for Class A for Bakugo's team to win out in the end. 22% voted for Class B for Tokage's team, and then 12% thought that maybe this match will end in a draw. So those results are kind of what I expected going into this fourth match. A lot of people are rooting for Class A for Bakugo's team. And man, oh man, if Bakugo's team does not end up winning, I can't even imagine the reactions that the fandom will have. <laughs> So thank you guys for participating within that poll and you guys can definitely expect posts like that appearing in the near future. I am so glad that we now have this feature added to the channel and we're gonna have a lot of fun with it. But now with that out of the way, let's dive into chapter 207. Let's dive into this latest chapter and let's see who ends up coming out on top for these next few chapters for this fourth match. Hey guys, for this fight, you know Saro, right? And Jiro, yeah? They're definitely a problem for us. Bondo Kojiro. Adding Sato and Bakugo into the mix will create a perfect balance between offense and defense. If we lag behind, we're basically as good as dead. And then right underneath Owase, we have our boy Scyther, the Pokemon of Class B. He has an awesome design. I love the way he looks, but it just reminds me of a Pokemon. It reminds me of Scyther. Who cares about that? Let's make mincemeat out of them. Kamakiri. Togaru. Just shut up for a second. And then right underneath Scyther, we have our lizard girl, Tokage Setsuna, the one that everyone will be keeping their eyes on throughout this fourth match. Hit it, girl. Hit it, girl. Hit it, girl. Hit it, girl. First one to make a move wins. Let's go get them. The fearless class B. And I'm looking at her panel. Does she have a piece of her coming off of her body? Because I know that her quirk name is Lizard Tail Cut. Is she able to actually rip off her limbs? And do they grow back? Like, I'm really looking forward to seeing what her quirk is, but it looks like she's beginning to activate it. All right, up next is round four. Class A and B are neck to neck with one victory each. But can we really say that they're equally matched? Vlad still giving his biased reporting and especially having really in all caps as he was saying that, putting the emphasis like, are we really having equal matches here? And right below that, I just went down. Vlad is not hiding his emotions at all. He is not hiding it from Class A. And he is saying Class A's only win was thanks to Shinzo. Are they truly equal to Class B? He's throwing that in there. He's throwing in the fact that because they had Shinzo on their team, that's the only reason Class A got a win in the first place. Wow, Vlad is being savage right now, throwing that shade towards Class A. And then we have our protesters of Kaminari, Hiroshima, Aoyama, and Tokoyami saying, that's a terrible way of phrasing it, Vlad-sensei. 
And then off in the corner, we have Midnight and All Might. Ironic that his quirk is blood control, yet he can't control his own hot-blooded head. <laughs> Very true, Midnight. Very true. His passion is overflowing, but wait a minute. She's saying that Vlad can't control herself, yet like a few chapters ago, Midnight was having orgasms of everyone in the springtime of youth. <laughs> but we see Aizawa walking towards them. Cut it out. But Sensei, this is a serious battle. Can you afford to make the same mistake twice if this was the real deal? Class B has definitely taken much more tactful measures. That's the reality of this. I guess Vlad is a better teacher than me. Wow, Aizawa isn't even denying that fact. He's basically saying Vlad might be a better teacher than me. I mean, they have spent more time in the classroom, so maybe he is. And just look at our protesters. Just the look on their faces. They are trying to hold back tears of disappointment because they're like, Man, we're failing our teacher. We are failing Aizawa right now. We should be better because, you know, we have experience fighting villains, but sometimes that just is not the case. And now we have Monoma chiming in. Oh boy, what is he gonna, what is he gonna blurt out this time? After all, you're all troublemakers. Did you know amateurs are the only ones who cause trouble in the first place? <laughs> He should be the one to talk. He is the troublemaker of Class B. Oh man, the pot calling the kettle black in this scenario. I think Monomo should listen to his own words and apply them to himself because the look on Kirishima and Danki and they're like, really dude, are you really saying that right now? <laughs> you gotta love whenever Monomo chimes in now and again. And then going back to All Might and Midnight staring up at the screens, as a result of their daily training, Class B has also powered up. They put in the work in the classroom. That's why they are proving themselves right now against Class A. But Class A isn't going to just sit around forever. You really love Class A, don't you, All Might? I mean, he loves all of his students, but he is particularly biased towards a few of them for obvious reasons. I like everyone in the class. Sure you do. Sure you do, All Might. <laughs> I'm looking forward to your performance, young Bakugo. Oh my god. I love the contrast of these two panels. You go from the nice, calm, tranquil panel of All Might staring up at the monitors, and then you just go right towards the chaotic one of Bakugo screaming at the top of his lungs. You're too damn slow, you slowpoke. I love that close-up of Bakugo, but even though he has slowly changed as a character, he really hasn't on the surface. He is still that loud, boisterous, Always angry Bakugo we knew at the very beginning of the story. I'm trying to listen to the sounds as I go. Forget about it, just hurry up and follow me. So Class A is already on the move to Class B's location, and Jiro is trying to multitask right now by keeping up with her team, but also plugging in the jacks, doing some reconnaissance, trying to figure out where Class B, all the members are located. In a way, her and Shoji having them on your team is probably the most crucial to have because you are always aware of where your opponent is at all times. So she is a very essential part of Bakugo's team right now. Of course, we're the ones following him. Guess he hasn't changed at all since the sports festival. That's right, Sarah was on the cavalry battle team with Bakugo, so he has first-hand experience of seeing the anger up close and personal. But we have noticed those small changes with Bakugo. On the outside, he's still the same angry boy that we know, but on the inside, he has changed little by little. He sort of seems willing to work with us now, but see, Jiro's picking up on that subtle difference in Bakugo to where back then he would not want to work with his teammates. He would just go gung-ho on himself, but right now he's willing to work with his team members. So this is the development I like to see with Bakugo, and I'm hoping we get more of it. Listen up, you inferior underlings, just follow me. He's still talking down to his teammates, so that is still the old Bakugo right there. Stop with the inferior and underlings. I'll take the lead and head forward. You losers just need to be my backup. Hey ears, pick up on the sounds coming from the small fry and figure out their location, and he's still giving out the nicknames to his teammates. Hold up, you're going on the offensive. You do know that they have some super strong fighters on their side, right? Since we have Jiro with us, we should examine the situation and take caution before attacking. That's actually a smart play, you know, figure out where they are, where they are located, and then come up with a game plan. 
But judging by Bakugo's expression on the next panel, I don't think he's agreeing with him. Are you stupid? If we don't make the first move, it's over for us. We don't have time to take caution. We gotta go. We're the ones with the ability to spot them. Got it. I wonder if it'll be okay. So Bakugo is shocked as they are moving forward. Stop. I see them. And we see hair popping out of one of the pipes. That's probably Tokage, because she's the only one that has long hair on Class B side. Ears, still doing those nicknames like he did at the sports festival. Elbow guy, save him! My name's Saro! You missed! Raccoon eyes! Lay down some acid in the direction we're going! It's me and Asuna! I have a name! All of their members should be close. Find them. So Jiro's getting ready to plug into the Matrix. Ooh, I like this panel of like the echo location, the sonar going out, and you can see just the earphone jacks plugging into multiple locations. I like that panel, that looks awesome. And she's picking up all the sounds, some clanging on metal, banging sounds, buzzing noises, and she opens up her eyes. Hurry the hell up, wait. It's a trap. It's a trap. Oh boy, Class B has Class A trapped. So, did they like fall into Class B's plans? Did they predict this? All right, time's up. Surprise, motherfucker. What? She can detach her limbs. She's right behind Bakugo. The lower half of her head is dispersed from her body and Bakugo can't turn around fast enough. You can see the shocked look on his face. So that's her quirk, lizard tail cut. She's able to just dismember herself. She's kind of like, oh, what's that character from One Piece? I do not know about One Piece. I have not really read it, but I know about certain characters. Buggy the Clown. It's very similar to that, to where he can kind of disperse his body parts as well if he gets cut. So she's behind Bakugo, and he goes to swing, and she dodges that. And you can see all of her limbs across the environment. That's why Jiro is picking up all of the different sound effects coming from the environment. There were more than four people running around, so they basically took away Jiro's reconnaissance skills. That's smart. They took advantage of Jiro's enemy search. Exactly. And you just see the floating bottom half of her head with her tongue sticking out. That's an awesome quirk. Tokage Setsuna's quirk, lizard tail cut. She can split her body into several pieces and move them. And you can see her eye floating above the environment, and that's how she's able to keep track, I guess, of all of her limbs spread about, but then also locate where Class A is located. Wow, she, is, she can levitate her body parts and move them independently. But how many different parts can she separate into? Currently, she's able to divide her body up to 50 different parts depending on the length. Okay. That answers my question. So 50 different body parts. That's OP, that is crazy. So she can definitely spread herself thin in a way. And now we just see all of her limbs coming in and just bombarding Bakugo. The strength doesn't amount to much, but it's annoying. The target is too small. So it's not really affecting him all too much. It's kind of just a nuisance having all of these things bombarding him all at once. Barricade tape so that the lizard's parts can't attack. So Saro adding some defenses around them over here, Bakugo. So they're going to like cage themselves so that way if the limbs come in, the tape would just attach to them and it would be like sticky tape for bugs. You know, you're catching all the flies with the tape spread about. That's actually a really smart move by Saro. And then the bottom half of Tokage's head connects with the eye, you're finished. Blue Squall. So Bondo was ready for this. He just spread his glue or cement around them as they are trapped from the tape. So they're basically caging them up right now. Class B did have a plan in place. Damn it, we were tricked. Yeah, I did it. Just like how Setsuna planned. So they had this plan from the get-go. Bondo Kojiro's quirk, Semidine. He is able to gush out liquid adhesive and adjust how fast it dries. So it's some type of glue or cement, some type of adhesive. And we saw him use that at the sports festival, 
but he can control how fast it dries. So that's a very unique power as well. This way, so Sato and Sarah are getting covered in that adhesive. They are most likely going to be immobile unless something can be done about it. And we have Scyther moving in right now. Kamakiri Togaru's Quark, razor sharp. He can produce blades from all over his body. He is basically Scyther. He's got claws and blades on his arms. Who's that Pokemon? It's Scyther. Scyther. He is a Pokemon. He is Scyther. <laughs> You're way too slow. So he's cutting at the pipes, and that's going to fall on top of Sato, Saro, and Jiro. Oh, man. I love that look of Tokage, just like her limbs coming and conjoining back together. That is really cool. By coordinating the sound made as he closes in, they won't realize. Since Bandu made the pipes and tape sticky, they won't be able to get it off if they touch them. Yeah, they are basically trapped right now. And then Deku, observing all this, they're taking advantage of Class A's moves. They're using what would have been Class A's advantage and using it to their own advantage. Sato's getting ready to catch the falling pipe, but then it would get stuck to him. At least the two of you. Akago! Even as he is getting bombarded by the many limbs attacking him, he launches an explosion back at the falling debris and destroys it. He saved his teammates. He's actually cooperating with his team. This is what I wanted to see from Bakugo. And you just see it getting dispersed away from his team and Scyther up on the pipe. There won't be any cover left if he does that. I have the advantage when it comes to speed, and he is just launching himself. It looks like he has a blade coming out of his foot, but he's going after Jiro. Let's start from the most annoying, Jiro, and she is still coming together right now. Bakugo, he's looking back. He notices that Scyther just made his move, and All Might save and win. We're going back to what All Might said after the Deku and Kachan fight. Save and win win and save. If you guys could both do it, you guys would be the best heroes. And Bakugo. Bakugo. He rushed in there. I've gotten a lot stronger. He saved Jiro right then and there. And he is basically kicking Jiro out of the way and launching an explosion point blank at Togaro. Wow. What he reached was another type of strength. And that is the end of the chapter. So this is what I wanted to see from Bakugo. The developments that he has gotten over the series, we are starting to see that. He is actually cooperating with his teammates in his own way, of course. I mean, in the beginning, he was still being that same angry Bakugo, barking orders, telling them to follow him. But when it comes down to it, if his team needs him, he will be there. So he's adopted a new kind of strength, and he is taking what All Might said to him back then to heart. If he can start saving people, he will end up winning as well. So, I like this a lot. So now Deku has to apply this as well. He always goes in to save people, but he needs that same drive that Bakugo has to win. And if Deku can do that, these two are going to be very formidable moving forward. But that is the end of the chapter, really just kicking off the start of the fourth match. We got a lot of stuff with, you know, all the students with the bias reporting from Vlad. I like getting to see the quirks too of Class B on full display. Togaru Scyther has a really cool quirk, which really does remind me of the guy that Kirishima went after during, right before the overhaul raid arc. There was that guy that could just launch blades from his body. He really does remind me that the way he's able to bring out blades from his body. So Scyther's ability, really, really cool. Bondo's quirk we've seen before. We didn't really see Awase this chapter, but we already know he has the quirk of Weld. But we finally got to learn Togage's quirk of lizard tail cut, which is amazing. She can just disperse her limbs. They can float, they can fly, and she can control them in any which way independently. 
man, she is going to be formidable. How are they going to take her out if she can just disassemble? How do you stop that person? How do you stop a person that can just deassemble their body? Because she can get out of mostly any situation. Maybe if they use Bondo's quirk against her, glue her up to keep her together, maybe then, or maybe Saros tape. So you're gonna have to keep her and hold her together so that way she cannot use her quirk. So with that guys, that right there is my live reaction to chapter 207 of My Hero Academia. But now I definitely wanna hear your guys' thoughts on this latest chapter. What were your positives? What were your negatives? What was your favorite quirk shown by Class B this chapter? And what do you guys think about Bakugo at the very end swooping in and saving Jiro from Scyther just coming in to cut her down? Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you guys want to talk more about My Hero Academia, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And also feel free to interact with the community posts that I now have unlocked on the channel. Gonna have a lot of fun with those, so definitely go check those out. And if you wanna talk about My Hero outside of YouTube, feel free to follow me over on Twitter. A link to my Twitter account can also be found in the description down below. That's going to do it for me here, guys. So until next week, when we have chapter 208 of My Hero Academia, I'll talk to you guys next time, and remember, go beyond plus ultra.